This is a gut shot of the stereo output amplifier for the reverb. Now I know this looks pretty freaking ugly. It definitely is. And it was because I made it out of scraps, just things that I had laying around. So my cost to build this was almost nothing. It's just stuff from my junk pile, my spare parts pile, and uh, scrap. You know, the case was just scrap. It was uh, another thing that I had built once before as a prototype. So seriously, it does work perfectly and sounds really good. Uh, the amplifier was never designed to be a product, so I don't really care what it looks like as long as it does its job and sounds good. So the only thing I actually did go out of my way to purchase for this were these transformers. Those are the secret weapon that makes this thing work. So that's just a pair of transformers from Edcore, which are XPP10-8-10K. These are 10 watt, 8 ohm output transformers that are basically wired backwards. And that, that's the key here. It's using those 8 ohm drivers as pickups, feeding into these things. Are wired backwards and then it spits out 10k to the input of a 12AT7. And the 12AT7 amplifier uh, has this voltage regulator on the B+. Uh, it's a neon regulator tube. I only did that just because it makes life easy to design a circuit when you have a very precise voltage that you know is a given. So I put a pot, a pot right here so I could dial it in to be exactly 265 volts. That way I could design a circuit around 265 volts that works perfectly. It just makes life easy. I wouldn't do that on a product. You know, it's just extra stuff that you don't need to have. Uh, but in the case of one-off, it's the easiest way to go about it. Now these transformers are Carnhill output transformers. I uh, don't know the model number, but I do know that they're 2.4K to 600 ohms. And I'm using a pair of 6CA4 rectifier tubes only because I had them and you know I love tubes. And then there's also one other tube over here which you probably can't see too well. And that is a thermal relay tube. And that's the standby switch for the B+. Uh, so there's uh, also a pair of pots on here and that's just your volume controls. Definitely we're gonna need to use those volume controls to calibrate this thing. The, the pickup that's furthest away from the driver is gonna be the quietest. Uh, so that's a good reason to have volume pots on here. Yeah, this big guy is a power transformer. It's also an Edcore transformer. I'm a big fan of Edcore. They make really good stuff at an affordable price. What we have here is another junkyard special. This is the driver amplifier for the plate reverb. Now, this thing is definitely ugly and that's okay, I don't freaking care. It's not a product, you know, I did not make this to sell to people. It's just for me. So I made it out of spare parts, anything I had laying around so that it wouldn't cost me anything to build. It's uh, recycled parts. It's basically a recycled amplifier, but it does sound awesome. So I based it on a Dynaco ultralinear push-pull amplifier that uses a pair of EL84 vacuum tubes. But this is actually a bit different. There is no phase inverter tube. Instead of using a phase inverter tube, I'm just using this input transformer as dual purpose. So it's a Jensen line input transformer, and it is just maintaining a balanced signal all the way into the tubes. So it's basically kind of like a phase inverter, but it's not. It's a balanced amplifier. And this little conjomulation of stuff is a bridged H attenuator. I will say that this particular setup where you use a transformer and maintain a balanced signal going into the tubes, that doesn't really work in a hi-fi system. It's very lossy. And in the case of a plate reverb, it works just fine because there is no way in hell you would need whatever, a 12 watt amplifier pushing your plate reverb. That's insane. Um, probably just a couple watts is all you need. So it doesn't matter if this thing's lossy. 